The 2023 Democracy Day, it's June 12th and it's home stretch at this point in time. We've got two gentlemen joining us now to just uh, talk about security. Kabir Adamo is here with us in our studios. He is the managing director of Beacon Consulting Limited. Thank you for coming on and we thank you very much indeed for your patience. Throughout, My pleasure, uh, For some hours now. And then we also do have Dr. Bala Hassan, who is a retired assistant inspector general of police, also a legal practitioner and lecturer in the Department of Psychology, University of Lagos, who joins us from our studios in Lagos. Thank you as well for Thank joining you. us and for your patience Thank as well you on the program today. To all, Demula, all right, let, let me start with you, Mr. Adamu. Well, I know the president in his speech did talk about uh, how he did ask us Nigerians uh, to sacrifice a little more for the survival of our country. And uh, if I could paraphrase some of his speech in paragraph 19, where he did say, for your trust and belief in us, I assure you that our sacrifice shall not be in vain. The government I lead will repay you through massive investments in transportation. And then he went on to say that infrastructure, education, regular power supply, healthcare, other public utilities that will improve the quality of our lives. We know that when these kind of things happen and then you have protests here and there, security agencies are usually on their toes because they know this could breach or breach security. So which leads us into our focus here today. And in the speech, I thought I was the one I looked for some part of security in the president's speech, so maybe because he didn't want to lump so much in that, but I didn't see that, but you also went through that. How, of course we know how hugely important that is. So from your reading, um, what do you think could have happened there? Yeah, uh, I, I think there's a link between uh, our democracy and then security. So whether we speak directly on security or not, the mere fact that we are advancing democracy, which of course we're doing by marking June 12th, uh, and the president definitely emphasized that. He talked about sacrifices made by you know, um, those who, whose lives had, were given to um, June 12th. And then of course reminded us that we also need to make more sacrifices. For me, that in itself is a realization that by advancing our democracy, then we're actually supporting the growth of security within the country. Uh, why is that? The, the three ingredients that we're trying to achieve and for which the president has spoken about, um, inclu inclusion, diversity, and equity would better be achieved in a democratic setting than outside a democratic setting. So to that extent, whether he, um, he directly spoke about security, which he didn't, uh, but the mere fact that he's advancing uh, um, democracy, uh, the entirety of that, spe that speech was actually about... So it doesn't mean that we're taking it for granted? Definitely. The way it is. Def mm. Definitely. Right. Well, let me take the next question to uh, AIG in Lagos. Uh, and, uh, you know, Mr. Kabir Adamu has expressly stated that, well, he didn't speak, the president didn't speak directly to security. And he's delivered two speeches now. Uh, from those two speeches, the economy largely has been the focus. So I'm going to ask you whether you think that Security has taken the back burner, or as they usually would say, they say if you address the economy, security will largely be taken care of. Do you think that that is where we currently are, or do you think that we should look after security before we can now begin to talk about repairing the economy? Well, by and large, the security is interwined with the with, with economy, because if the economy is buoyant, Virtual people have job, the rate of employment has decreased, the GDP has increased, and so on and so forth. There will be less crime in the society. So by a large one, the president talked about strengthening democracy, equity, justice for the people. Indirectly, he's talking about uh, enhancing security. And m mostly, you don't need to uh, see how, where the direction of the feeling of the president by what he mentioned. Because what, two, uh, a day after he came to office, he summoned the service chiefs to his office and directed them that they must work in harmony so they should not work in conflict. That enough gave the, the security community a sense of belonging that they are going to work together for the peace and happiness of Nigeria. Because when there is peace and security, then definitely 
the other things to follow, like economy, development, and other things that, that Nigerians are, are, are praying for will, will come in. After what is the responsibility of government? Under Section 14.1b of the Constitution is welfare uh, of the, and security of the people. So we wouldn't say that the president has jettisoned actual security in his speech. By his actions, he showed that security is very, very important and is ready to give Nigerians the best uh, in terms of security and other social goals. Well, interesting. I mean, it's a good thing you made reference to that and the president underscoring uh, the importance of the security agencies needing to work together. It's also very uh, important to underscore the fact that one of the problems he initially had to quell uh, was the DSS taking over the offices of the EFCC in Ikoi, Lagos. And I think they were asked to leave those offices, even though the DSS says, oh, they used to be our offices. But this is what we've noticed. This uh, internal wrangling. We also saw his visit to the new counter counterintelligence uh, security agency. I think it's a, a new edifice that has just been yeah, built here in Abuja. And he underscored again the need for security agencies to work together. Uh, but how big a problem would you say that security currently is? I mean, unlike in President Buhari's uh, 2015 speech, where he, you know, Boko Haram was a major concern and everybody wanted something very urgently done about it. I think in his inaugural address, he asked the uh, chief of army staff at that point to move their office to uh, Borno State. And we saw that, you know, make him featuring very prominently in his inaugural address. Um, how big would you say that security still is as a problem for Nigeria? Well, security problem is still a challenge to Nigerians because... Uh, to the ordinary man, they need security to do most of the things that will translate into well-being of the people. About three or four days ago, there are reports that uh, uh, some farmers in, in, in Saban Bruni, somewhere in Sokoto, that have boundary with, with uh, Zampara, say some bandits went to them that they must pay 10 million naira to enable them to go, go to their farms. And these are people who ordinarily they have been farming for ages without being subjected to this type of problem. So these type of problems will translate into economic problems because the, the cost of production of food will be high. And of course, to the consumers, definitely it's not a good development. So the president has also to, to think very well that uh, the, the, the crisis of security crisis in north northeast, that is Boko Haram, mm -hmm. which is still there. In the, in the northwest, we have these challenges of uh, the bandits trying to collect money from poor farmers to enable them to go to the farm. So this must stop. We shouldn't think that security challenges are finished. If you go to the, to the, to the east, to the southeast, the, the issue of IPOP is still there. So we cannot say since the exit of that regime, we have solved the, the security problem of Nigeria. We have to need more. He has to do it on his service chiefs, the present one there. Even if you want to employ, uh, appoint others, he should look at the, the qualification, the, the, the people who can deliver the goods so that uh, there is no society without crime, but they should take into cognizance people who are able to deliver the job because the, the antecedent of the current president is to look for the best brand to do work for him. He should look sight of this. I'm happy uh, what is even causing some negative circumstances for police is issue of their welfare on retirement. There is a bill now for an act to exit the police from the contributive pension scheme. Once this is done, Police, suburban police officer will put in their very best to see that uh, crime and criminality reduce the bribe minimum. Situations whereby a retired police commissioner earns 75,000 naira as pension per, per month is, is highly uncalled for. But if this is done, they will join their counterparts in the military and other security agencies. At least a, a retired police officer can live above board. Where somebody retires a DSP is earning 7,000 naira, 8,000 naira. 7,000 naira is of no consequence to Nigerians. It took me 21,000 naira fuel from Ikoi to come to this side for this program. So you can see where uh, motivation for officers, not only police, also all the security agencies will be motivated so that when the crime is very low, his policies will drive in uh, successfully for the betterment of all Nigerians. Okay, let me come to you, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Mr. Hadamo. I, would you say that we're getting distracted? When you look at the, the myriad of challenges that we have in the area of security,
the AIG has enumerated quite a number of them. Uh, economies, of, of course, taking a huge part of the front burner right now. And, I mean, fuel subsidy removal, you cannot take that away. People are feeling the pain immediately and directly. Uh, but do you think that there will be anything that will come up as a result of that that, that could impact our security negatively? No, definitely. Um, uh, one of the things that was um, mooted today, and we saw how uh, the security infrastructure in the FCT responded to it, was a, a planned protest by civil society organizations. And if you had moved around in uh, the FCT, especially in the municipal council area, you would have seen the deployment of security um, forces uh, more, more a, a robust deployment actually beyond what uh, in the ordinary you would have observed. Um, that is the security forces responding to a intelligence quote and unquote of a planned protest. Um, apart from that, um, if the um, organized labor uh, you know, action had gone on, like mm. they said they would, uh, good thing there was some level of engagement and then they decided to call it off, um, they would usually enforce um, the strike action, and that too would have represented a level of security. And then, of course, um, in today's world, uh, there's what we call Protest 2.0, where apart from the actors themselves, you have other levels that become engaged into the protest action, what we ordinarily call hool hooligans. Uh, and then other names that... that uh, there are questions that. about that when you talk about, you know, security agents being deployed on democracy. Day. People will say, isn't democracy about expression? I mean, there'll, there'll be huge questions about that, but I'm sure we have yeah. another guest. But, but, yeah, but before that, I'm just wondering, I mean, what should we expect from uh, this president being sort of military person like his predecessor? And one key thing now is the attitude of security agencies towards citizens. We know that usually there's this us and them kind of scenario, how hostile they are to those at the first line of security. So, yes, we've seen him give directive to the security agencies work together, not at cross purposes. If anyone stands in the way, the person will be removed. So do we expect any particular kind of behavior in this dispensation from it? So uh, I would answer your question um, in two ways. Number one is to look at the renewed hope agenda that was released by Mr. President, uh, you know, before during the campaigns, uh, upon which um, we saw an indication of what he said he was going to do, okay. and then the speech he gave uh, during his swearing in, in at the Eagle Square. Mm -hmm. In that speech, he talked about um, reform. He yeah. talked about looking at the doctrine. Uh, behind this, the security agenda, so both um, military and then the other security agencies' doctrine. Now, for me, Democracy Day is a quintessential moment for mm. Nigeria. It represents um, the aspirations of all Nigerians. Sadly, those that you know, waved that flag lost their lives to it. How did they lose their lives to it? Sadly, because of the actions um, which we all condemned of some, of, some members of the security agencies. So it is quintessential to the point that in the Renewed Hope Agenda, the, pro the president is promising to look at the doctrine that drives security. And frankly, we don't need to reinvent um, you know, the, the, the entire um, situation because in our revised National Security Strategy 2019, uh, which is a document that is existing and it's life, we were told that there is going to be a shift uh, in the security paradigm, from the state-centric approach to security to the human-centered um, uh, approach to security. Yeah. In other words, protecting uh, the dignity, the civil rights of the average Nigerian. So that, for me, is pick, pick that document up and begin the implementation of that document through reforms yeah. and then through an improvement in security sector governance. Now, these two things are very technical issues security sector reform and security yeah. sector governance. Time will not allow me to go into the details of it, but the essence of it is to have that paradigm shift so that the average Nigerian, that person in the village, is able to see, correlate the action of the security agencies with his or her human, human rights. The moment we do that, yeah. and I think we'd have achieved um, the essence of what this day represents to every Nigerian. Okay. Well, we also have Professor Dikwa, who joins us in my studios in Maiduguri Prof. Uh, thank you for holding on on the program today. So could you tell us then, yes, it's democracy day. Yes, there's a new government in place, and uh, he, he's also been actively involved. Uh, he was and still is. Are there expectations concerning security, particularly given where you are, how 
uh, challenges that they face security-wise. So what, if there are, what would you say those concerns are and expectations as well? Thank you, Chamberlain. And uh, earlier on, f failure to network, we couldn't get with you. And uh, as um, Ladia Corridolo, Alessia uh, also did his best, we couldn't make it. Now it is the time. You, you see, Chamberlain, 30, 30 years down the line, uh, uh, and from 1993, when the mandate was, was uh, uh, trashed, uh, uh, disturbed, and the people of Sona, at that time, everybody had a, an abiola of their family. Almost every family had a biola inside because he had not had the intention of running for the president as all. It was a circumstance that put him to do it. And eventually, you have uh, an, an, uh, a Tinubu liking that particular uh, person that he had all along uh, been mentoring others to do the right thing. And those who mentored, he who he mentored, all of them were successful and, meant, and, and made sure that uh, they served their country. Uh, better. And this is the time for him now to do it himself with others whom he mentored will come around to also contribute their, their best. And that uh, those who have never had the opportunity of serving will have a, a test in it, a jump, not necessarily uh, learning on the rope, but it will take, it is a departure from the, the uh, n narrative of waiting a long time when people, intellectuals and so on, give, give their uh, advice and so on, hardly responded to, including urgent issues were hardly responded to. Uh, I, I spent the other time I listened to Mao Pei uh, showing her, venting her annoyance over it, and that happened, including lives, lives were uh, involved. And the previous one didn't do it. And that 30 years of Abiola is now here with people to uh, the deal or the uh, of people of uh, Tinobu and Shetima having a, uh, a down to earth uh, ability to confront the issues we have been having. And that uh, a small, a tiny, less than 1% uh, people who are maneuvering, doing the thing, forming the mafia of its own against any, any good intention of government. This is an opportunity to all of us contribute to the leadership of this country with uh, somebody who is honest now, who is honest, and that we may also do it as if those who are from outside, people hate to talk about uh, conspiracy theories, but it is obvious with technology now we are able to talk to our colleagues outside there who have always uh, blocked Nigeria from leading the continent uh, uh, to prosperity, to get the basic uh, developmental infrastructure in place. You don't see them, but you will see them pulling down everything Nigerian, including why is it that Nigeria couldn't afford electricity 60, uh, 63 years down the line. The same thing happening with us in terms of refinery with the trillions rent. They are sunk into it, yet we couldn't get the four refineries functional. And we could even have built others in addition to those ones. They are not visible, but those who are you know, foot soldiers are known, are known to the security agencies. And therefore, we have to do something uh, better, different from the past, where uh, they had malls from all over. And that, again, for once, let us do it for our country so that uh, the, the human resources, the experts, are not uh, taken away from us. Imagine a, uh, a, a bad, what do you call it, a meager uh, uh, pay uh, cost our doctors. Thousands of them had to go outside. And now they are even after our nurses. The same thing with professors. Imagine somebody, a, pro, uh, a minister, uh, trying to ridicule a professor, leading other professors into this country to, be, to fix its basic infrastructure into education. And those, again, 
30 years in the Second Republic. Imagine all the way from Borno, it was the same combination from Borno and Lagos when uh, during the Second Republic, uh, Alaji Latif Jakande was relating directly with Borno of uh, okay. Mohamed Goni. Mohamed Goni was under GNPP and uh, uh, Lagos was UPN. Progressive minded people, and we need progressive minded, and we have to take Nigeria to its right, rightful place, not the kind of foreign okay. policies that uh, kept Nigeria Almost. out of its role for eight years. Uh, uh, imagine yeah. people now are going to, uh, to talk about Ukraine, Russia, and Nigeria is not there. The foreign policy, the foreign ministry well, has failed us for eight years. I don't know why this always years. happens. I Thank mean, you. We always, always wish we had a lot more time when we have you on or when we talk security with all you gentlemen because it's always one very interesting point or two that we need to or try to always go to but we just never really achieve these things again we just have to uh thank you uh, professor khalifa dekwa professor of social linguistics and international relations he joins us from our studios in Borno, and then we've also had uh, kabir adamu managing director of beacon consulting limited as well as dr bala hassan retired aig Lecturer, Department of Psychology, University of Lagos. Gentlemen, we thank you all for your time and most importantly, for your patience today. Thank you all, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you very much, Ambali.